Hey guys, welcome to another demo by the portal team. And we are very proud to share the progress that we've made and um, the accomplishments are not trivial. So today's demo is truly momentous. Uh, we think it's the first in the history of Bitcoin and ETH. But first, let me introduce you to our guest today, uh, Yanislav Mahalov from Eternity and his team. Uh, Yanni is known as the godfather of Ethereum. He's one of the founding OGs of Ethereum, uh, but due to some architectural disagreements between him and Vitalik, went on to found Eternity, uh, the Eternity project we're big fans of, uh, not only for its Sophia programming language, for its smart contract architecture, its consensus mechanism, everything was built with an eye towards scaling. And uh, so we really love that project. Uh, the real reason we are doing uh, layer two cross-chain swaps is to address one of the biggest problems that crypto has faced forever. You know, if you're new to crypto, you might think that exchange risk is a new thing with the FTX collapse and uh, an exchange failing every month. But this dates all the way back to the Mount Gox days. And this is like the perpetual sword of Democles hanging over our heads. Uh, you know, exchanges can lose your money, uh, leak your identity, uh, wash trade, manipulate markets, all sorts of shenanigans can happen at centralized exchanges. So I'm proud to say that today marks the day that centralized exchanges start to become obsolete. So what you're about to see is uh, a trustless layer two atomic swap between Bitcoin and Ethereum, which has never been done before. And we believe that it is a truly momentous occasion for cryptocurrencies. You know, these swaps make it so that you can trade your ETH and Bitcoin peer to peer fast, seamlessly, uh, with very low transaction fees, and you get additional privacy for your orders so exchanges and miners can't front run your orders. Just imagine uh, a cross chain index that has absolute feature parity with best of the breed centralized exchanges and matches them in terms of speed, user experience, transaction uh, cost, but there is no custodian in the middle. There's really no trusted third party. Nobody's holding control of your coins and no bridges, no wrappers and no multiple hops and seven different protocols you have to hop between to get the exchange pair that you want. And it is as seamless and as intuitive as a product from a high quality consumer grade company like Apple. So what you're about to see can get very technical, but I would encourage you to focus on how simple the actual swap itself is between Alice and Bob. It looks plain, seamless, like an afterthought. I mean, I think that's the real magic behind the technology that we've built is that it seems so simple because it is so hard in the background. So solving the problem of cross-chain exchange not only solves the exchange risk issue, but it also scales Bitcoin. And I'll explain why. The biggest use case for Bitcoin is not peer-to-peer -peer transfer of value for that Lightning exists, but Lightning volumes are not that great compared to the exchange trading volume. The biggest use case for cryptocurrencies empirically is cross-chain trading. And other than what we've built, there's nothing that supports a truly trust in my solution for uh, at that level of trading volume. So it's also the biggest problem for Bitcoin. Um, all the way back when Satoshi said he was working on a new electronic cash system that works peer to peer, the first criticism he got was, it doesn't seem to scale to required size. And now it does. So I'm very excited to cut to the demo. And here we go. So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for another demo of what we achieved at Portal. Um, today, our guest is uh, Yanislav Mahalov, popularly known as uh, Godfather of Ethereum and is currently the founder of Eternity. Uh, Yanni is also an investor in Portal, and uh, Eternity is one of our favorite projects that uh, we'll be uh, integrating into the DEX uh, pretty soon. Interesting. I would really love to know also more about why you uh, abandoned Raiden and built your own thing, but maybe later. 
Yeah. When is the time? Also, maybe uh, Philip, Paolo, and Piotr, you know, if you want to just give a one sentence introduction about who you guys are. Yeah, that yeah. would be so great. I can start, of course. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, big fan of the idea of the non code uh, custodial exchanges and uh, solving hard problems with crypto, of course. And um, yeah, I've been with Eternity for, I think, more than five years now um, in, in different positions and mostly from the tech side, but also some project management and yeah, in, in a lot of things in Eternity. So awesome. yeah, looking forward to um, what you have shown. I, I'm a big fan of uh, like lightning and um we're, we're calling the, the, the eth layer two that we built the thunder just just for <laughs> shits and giggles awesome i i will also mention that uh we we did take a stab actually at, at getting lightning running on ethereum and that's kind of what led to a lot of the technical work that we we ended up with here all right peter you want to uh, couple of words well, yeah well in, in contrary to hello everybody contrary to what uh, philip said i just literally joined eternity uh the project uh, leading business development and uh generally very much obviously crypto fan not as technical probably as most people here because this is a really deep dive but i'm very curious to hear and get a little bit of a of a feeling for what uh, portal is doing at this point so uh pretty excited to hear about your uh, yeah, Piotr joined us from the mining world. Yeah, I, I was actually, I come from the uh, crypto mining world, actually. So it's a, it's a very different world. Um, so very, very interested to dive a little bit deeper in these aspects. Awesome. It looks like Anand is back. Yeah, let me try if I can share my screen once again. Quickly, I'm Paolo. I'm uh product owner at Eternity for the superhero wallet. Um, also looking forward to your demo and how we might be able in the future to maybe also integrate those swaps into our wallet directly. Cool. Um, let's see. I think people should be able to see my screen by now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So uh, what you're saying is uh, this is just the terminal where I'm running uh, the backend server. Uh, and there's two tabs that I've got open. Um, this is basically our, our web-based application that's going to be fronting um, the, the wallet and, and the rest of the UI for interacting with, with the backend services. Um, so to kick off, uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in. Uh, There's two separate users over here. So this one, I'm going to log in as Alice. Um, and over here, I'm going to log in as Bob. So uh, the basic principle over here is uh, both users starting out with some amount of uh, assets uh, in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, first create a DEX order for uh, swapping some amount of Bitcoin for uh, some Ether. I'm going to place that order, right? So on the um on the terminal on the left you'll see uh the terminal on the right you'll basically see all the orders uh as they're playing through so um alice has now placed an order uh and it's still waiting for a match because there's no counterparty yet um but now what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this up with bob uh go and i will so this so Bob is now going to be the counterparty for this one. Um, he's going to take the trade from Alice. So as you can see, immediately the orders get matched. The two parties uh, are, are, are matched by the backend. Um, and it's already moved into finalizing the order. So this is currently going through the motions of the atomic swap. And as you can see, the swap is finally committed. And the balances have been updated on both sides. Uh, money dot moved uh from one one end to the other uh none of it was ever custodied in the middle by uh by the exchange all we did was help move data back and forth uh between uh the two parties involved so that's pretty much uh the majority of the demo that that it, it took less than 30 seconds to do the demo <laughs> what's taken a few months of work to actually get this thing going <laughs> 
it's it's a bit anticlimactic over there but uh that, that's what we want right like we we want the people to feel that it's so seamless that there must not be anything yeah crazy. exactly right it, 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 it sounds like it should be very very simple except it's taking us months of work to actually get to this point and, and the demo lasts less than 30 seconds so um yeah i'm uh, open to any questions that you have uh and uh, like you know uh any other details that you would li like to know great i i really like interface i like that you can set the price there is there a slippage or probably not or you can you have uh, limit orders right yeah, uh, as of now, it's only limit orders, so there's no slippage at all. Um, right. Once we introduce market orders, then yes, there may be some slippage. Um, yeah. hmm. Cool. Um, I don't think you can set the price with things like Uniswap, so it's rather just doing the trade with what's available with the, um, with the pools in the background, right? Um, exactly. So this is a big advantage here, and this would be, I mean... Slippage is obviously something most of people don't want. Um, you want to know the price um, for which you're going to trade. Um, and yeah, um, people like me, they're happy to wait a little bit until the price matches or gets matched, essentially. Yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, the interface looks really um, simple as it should look. And absolutely, there's so much work in the background. Um, I see the... The stuff on the right but i was not able to follow all of this uh, um, transaction data um but um yeah cool um yeah anand so why don't you go through the steps on the cool uh mm -hmm. let's do that so let me just scroll mm -hmm. all the way back here so what you're really seeing at the start over here is uh just a couple of these uh, update channels that we open so um the networking over here uses a combination of uh http and web sockets um, to get the job done. So HTTP is used primarily for sending orders uh, for anything that's um, a call and receive sort of uh, um, setup. So placing orders, canceling orders, things of that nature, or you know, going through the motions of the swap, they're all based on uh, HTTP. Uh, whereas uh, when the server needs to push data down to the clients, that's what we use the web sockets for. That's the uh, bi-directional communication so that you don't have to keep polling for things uh, as they happen. So uh, right at the start, when you log in, uh, the system essentially both Alice and Bob open a couple of channels, and then you can see uh, there's uh, specific logs around the HTTP API. So this is basically Alice placing an order uh, for the trade. This is Alice placing an order on the ask side. Uh, she sends up the hash for the secret uh, that will be used for the atomic swap down the line. Uh, and then she'll basically punch in the details of the trade. So the, you can see the base asset is uh, Bitcoin over here, um, trading 10,000 sats. Uh, and the quote asset is an Ether um, looking for, uh, what is this? I want to say about a billion, uh, about a hundred billion waves. So, uh, that, that's basically the order that's coming in from Alice. So this these things that you see in the here middle over here, the, this is essentially the backend system uh, that's uh, punching out details. So the, uh, as soon as the order is received, it gets created and it en ends up being queued. Uh, and then at some point in, in the future, uh, it, it, the as soon as the order gets created, uh, you can see the WebSocket sent over here. So uh, the, the client is basically notified as the order moves through the various states. So this is the WebSocket notifying uh, Alice uh, that here's your, your order, uh, the details of the order, what time it was placed, uh, and basically echoes most of the data back. Um, then at some point in the future, the order gets opened. The queued orders basically move out of the queue. Uh, they get placed onto the order book. So at this point, now you see there's one order in the system. Queues have gone back to zero. Um, and again, uh, now the order moves into the order, uh, the open state. So now it's, the order is open for uh, open on the order book. Uh, and again, uh, over the WebSocket, Alice gets an update. Um, so this is the next call comes from Bob. So this is Bob placing the uh, counterparty trade over here. So uh, again, the, the the base asset and the quote asset are the same, uh, but a the hash is different, and now it's on the bid side. So this is what triggers the trade. So again, uh, the order moves to the same motions, order gets created, uh, gets queued, uh, it's, and then immediately gets sent down the WebSocket to Bob. Uh, and then at some point in the future, it gets opened, uh, gets removed from the queue and gets opened. Um, and again, the opened order gets broadcast to Bob. 
uh, now that the orders are actually in and they're both sort of exactly the same uh, value, uh, uh, the matching engine kicks in and it matches the order. So you get the maker order and taker order. Uh, so that's the maker and that's the taker. A particular uh, book. And this essentially creates the, this triggers the creation of the swap. So as you can see now, the swap uh, essentially picks up uh, the hash from one of the two orders. Uh, in this case, it's picked up the maker's hash. Uh, so Alice becomes the secret holder. Uh, so you can see the secret holder party over here is Alice. Uh, and the secret seeker is now uh, Bob. Uh, and the swap is in the created state. So as soon as the swap gets created, once again, the swap gets broadcast to both Alice and Bob will get a copy of the swap. Uh, and then the respective clients will start uh, doing the motions of you know, who needs to go first. So in this case, Bob moves first because he's a secret seeker. Uh, Bob goes ahead and uh, this is called opening the swap. So uh, Bob puts a put against the uh, API v1 swap order and passes up some details. Um, as of now, we're not really hiding anything. Uh, these are all credentials. This is the Lightning certificate, the admin and uh, inverse Mac rooms for dealing with uh, Lightning connections over there. Um, and this is uh, this is a little bit excess logging over here, but it helps us sort of understand the, the overall flow. Uh, the HTTP API, uh, if you remember from the last time we spoke, uh, there was three levels of classes. The, the top level is the RESTful API, which speaks to a swaps uh, construct, uh, which essentially deals with all the atomic swaps in the system. Uh, and then that essentially calls the opening on the specific swap that is the, the one that is in progress, which then ends up calling uh, the open method for the specific party that's dealing with that. And that finally leads to the specific call on the network. In this particular case, uh, Bob opening the swap essentially is Bob creating an invoice on the lightning side of the network to send over to Alice to say, hey, you owe me some uh, BTC in response to the, the ether that I will be trading with you. So uh, essentially then Bob is creates a, an invoice on the lightning network. So you can see the uh, tokens that are coming through, that's the, the amount that Bob wants to trade for. Uh, and then the swap is moves from the created state, if you recall, uh, previously the swap was in the created state over here. Um, let me go back up a bit. Um, that's the status of the swap. So the swap was originally in the created state, but now that uh, Bob has opened it, the swap moves into the swap.opening state. So once again, as soon as the swap is opened, uh, the state changes. So both parties get a notification over the, the web socket with the, with the updated status. Uh, once the swap moves into the opening state, now Alice uh, knows that Bob has opened the, the swap. So she moves ahead and then places her order. Uh, the uh, opening on this side will essentially mean now Alice is going to send an invoice to Bob over the, uh, the Ethereum side. So this is over what we call our uh, ETH L2 network. Uh, this is the thing that, that Alex, uh, Alexi can sort of tell you more about this uh, when he goes through. Uh, same sequence of operations, uh, swaps dot open, uh, swap dot open, party dot open. Uh, in this case, the party doing the opening is, is Alice. Uh, but this time around, it goes into the uh, ETH L2 network where Alice creates an invoice uh, and drops that into the swap. Um, so as you can see, the, the, the state object in the swap uh, is keeping track of the invoice on the lightning side, and it's keeping track of the invoice on the, uh, the Ethereum side. So this is how both parties basically exchange the details. Uh, once again, because the swap has now moved into the open state, both parties have now called open, so now the swap is open, uh, and that causes another broadcast. So both Alice and Bob received the uh, updated uh, swap in the open state, so both they both now what they know what the invoice is. Um, there's now essentially it moves into the um, the next step, which is Bob is now going to go ahead and start doing the commit on his end. So this is uh, Bob sending up his credentials to try and do a commit. So uh, in this the commit step, essentially you can see the it's the same API endpoint, but now it's using the HTTP POST method, uh, which triggers uh, swaps.commit, which triggers swap.commit, 
which triggers party.commit for Bob. And that eventually goes down to the lightning level uh, and lightning then uh, goes, at, Bob goes ahead and starts committing the, um, the lightning side of the commit where he subscribes to the invoice uh, that was originally created uh, so that he can be notified when the payment is made uh, and gets ready for the payment. The, the swap moves into the committing state now. So this is Bob sort of having done the, the commit. Uh, and again, because the state changes, we see two broadcasts over the web sockets going to either party. Uh, finally, now that the swap is in the committing state, Alice knows that Bob has done his bit. So Alice will now go ahead and start running through the sequence on her end. Um, so again, Alice commits her swap, which goes through swap commit, swap commit, uh, party commit. And this goes into, firstly, she commits on the lightning side. Uh, where Bob, uh, Alice basically decodes the payment request, the, the, the invoice that Bob had sent, uh, decodes that, verifies the amount and everything, and then pays the invoice. And at the same time, she starts paying the invoice on the um, the Lightning side. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the fact that she starts paying the invoice on the Lightning side triggers uh, the setup on Bob's side. So Bob, as soon as he sees this, this invoice being paid, We'll start paying uh, the Ethereum invoice on the other side, uh, which Alice had created for him. And this essentially triggers our uh, our L2 logic uh, of, of the um, L2 payments being moved around the so this is these are essentially signed transactions that are being broadcast uh, directly peer to peer as opposed to going through the L1. So the, uh, I think the, the thing that I may have overlooked over here uh, at the start is uh, there is a smart contract that's deployed on the Ethereum network uh, on the L1. That's basically giving us the functionality to do this L2 uh, setup on top of it. Um, and that contract is is uh, the one that, that initially gets called for uh, setting up a payment channel. So that little bit about setting up the payment channel, that's out of band. Uh, just like the Ethereum, uh, just like the lightning payment channel between Alice and Bob, that was also set up out of band. Um, so that's the part that you, you did not see before. Uh, but now, uh, uh, now that Bob has paid the, the invoice, Alice actually sees the, the payment come through uh, on the ETH L2 network. Uh, and Alice reveals the secret, which then gets pushed to the other side uh, on the lightning side. Uh, now Bob gets the secret on that side and then settles the invoice uh, on the lightning side. So now both... Alice and Bob have settled the invoices on each of their sides, and Alice gets the payment confirmation for the original lightning payment uh, that she had paid. Uh, and that sort of moves the swap into the committed state. So once again, the swap gets updated, gets broadcast to both sides. Alice and Bob get the get to the committed state. And that is pretty much the end of the whole line over here. So I know there's, there's a fair bit of explanation over there. So uh, feel free to like <laughs> ask as many questions if you have any. Thank you, Anand. Yeah, thank you for this demo. Um, um, looks really clean, the solution. Um, great work. Um, um, maybe some of our, my, my team members have some questions, especially Philip, you, you know, lightning quite well, I think, or you said so. Yeah, actually, um, I mean, I don't have really any questions. It looks very straightforward. I mean, the process is um, simple to explain, right? People were talking about it for years that it's, I mean, theory is uh, is out there. And I think you did a nice implementation. The walkthrough was super helpful to know that, I mean, you do it as I would have expected you do to do you to do it. So yeah. I think it's it's very well done. Oh, cool! Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, and, and, and I mean, of course, you, if uh, there's, oh, sorry, sorry, credit where credits to you. Uh, all the lightning work was done by uh, Casey, uh, and a bunch of our um, Ethereum L2 work was done by Alexi. And how was of the experience with? It, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Sorry, if the code is open source at some point, um, I'm happy to have a look at it. Of course. Uh, yeah, open sourcing. Uh, I think that's a question for for Manoj and, and Chandra and Eric. Um, I Absolutely, definitely want to do that. Just the, the hell out of this thing. Yeah, the goal is to open source it. Cool. It will be difficult to do a decentralized exchange without um, 
open source without, new code. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, something that I like, as mentioned before, um, I'm potentially looking at this from the angle of how we could integrate this uh, in our wallet because we want to go with our wallet. Currently, we are only supporting uh, Eternity, but we are planning this is like on the roadmap um, to also integrate um, Bitcoin uh, wallet in there and potentially also Ethereum. So uh, for that stage, we're looking also for a way to swap inside the wallet between those uh, wallets and how that could look like. Um, so is there an API for us to communicate with or like potentially how would it look like to um, yeah to integrate the swap? Ideally, there should be API. some module which we could integrate, right? Or something like that, yeah. Um, and I want I, to add I, that I think Anon probably has some good good insight here. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it it seems to me at least like there should just be a simple implementation of a class, and if you expose certain methods, that is the integration. Anon, can you take the lead there? Um, sure. Uh, so most of the implementation that we've done here so far, um, like we sort of do it at two levels one is the 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 class implementation itself as as eric said so both the order books uh and and the uh swaps uh th there's a top level class which sort of covers every uh order every order of, so, sorry every order book and every order in the system just like there's a top level class that covers every swap in the system uh and then below that comes uh the implementation of each order book and every swap and below that is the implementation of the order and and the uh the parties to the swap um all of these are fronted at the top by an uh, by a restful api so technically it should be fairly straightforward for us once we know exactly what uh sort of functionality you're interested in we'll, we'll sort of expose that at the top level um as a top level class and then integrate that with an HTTP uh, API. So that way you should just be able to make calls into the system and then that should percolate all the way down the, the, the class structures to grab whatever little bits of data that you're looking for. Cool, I, <clears throat> I'm also involved in the AirGap wallet. Do you know about this? Um, uh, I've only heard about it. I haven't really done any research into it yet. <laughs> It's uh, it became in increasingly popular um, in the past years. Um, I'm kind of like the, the first sponsor of it. Um, we like um, funded it or gave it a grant initially, the first grant ever for the AirGap wallet. But it's a multi-coin wallet um, and a cold signing solution, a two-device signing um, solution. And um, yeah, um, the currently they have also integrated only uh, um centralized exchanges into their wallet but i think um they might also have a huge interest to um maybe collaborate in case you would like to have more wallet integrations with um, you would want as many wallets to support the the decks as possible because more liquidity obviously is better for everybody what's yeah. the name of that wallet again air gap air gap air gap okay by a company called Papers in Switzerland. I'm happy to introduce you to the founder. The domain is airgap.it. In case yep. isn't that one with .com, which isn't the right one. All right. Yeah, as Paolo mentioned, yeah, please go ahead. If you don't have any other questions, you know, one thing we've been thinking about is extending the layer to uh, the payment channel mechanism that we built on Ethereum to Eternity. So, mm -hmm. Alex, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about what you built and uh, how you see it, uh, you know, on Eternity? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, the cell two is pretty. Sorry, to Before you jump there, Marco had a question. Um, so, Marco's question, he typed it in the chat. Uh, is it possible that anybody can be taken from any order? Does it always have to be matched between two specific parties? It's a, you know, it's a general order book, but the counterparties, it, counterparties are bound when they are matched. Uh, Anand, Alexi, you want to chime in? Yeah, for the demo purposes, it was an exact match. As you saw, we had right. Ethereum with six zeros and Bitcoin with three zeros. But uh, Anand, 
um, that elaborate on uh, other matching? Um, sure. So the matching system right now, because we only support limit orders, uh, it only does exact matching. But once we start uh, adding market orders, at that point, we'll, like we talked about before, A, we'll introduce the concept of slippage a little bit. And two, um, once- and fields, right? Partial matches and fields, yeah. Yeah, so what, what, once uh, uh, the order book sort of matches uh, two parties, the expectation is they, the, the two of them will actually uh, go ahead and, and execute the, the swap cleanly uh, directly amongst each other. Um, the, the, there, are, there is the possibility that a party may try and back out after, uh, uh, of the trade uh, after the fact, but for the most part, the way the system is set up, uh, as long, A, as long as we're using our traditional clients, the clients are pretty much, as you can see, uh, once you place the order, everything just happens automatically. There's no user interaction needed right after that. Um, so th that's one level of uh, check. And the second is uh, we're looking into mechanisms to see uh, in the event that uh, in the future, because once we plan, plan to open source this, uh, there may be other client implementations and those clients may not always behave the same way as we intend for these to behave. So we're looking at uh, incentive mechanisms in here to say, uh, once you sort of start backing out of trades after you've been matched, then on subsequent trades, we will obviously up the price that you will pay. Uh, you will either get deprioritized in the order book uh, during the matching process, uh, or you'll end up paying more fees because you you backed out of a trade previously. So uh, it, it's also going to be based on a reputation-based system where users might uh, have to take advantage uh, or might have to be, uh, will be held accountable for or backing out of trades after uh, the, the the match has been executed. Um, so that's sort of a few of the things that we have in the pipeline. It's uh, again, it's uh, it's a little early to talk about those, uh, given that our primary focus right now is getting this to work correctly for every user for every swap, uh, and then we'll we'll keep adding more and more features as we go on. Great, thank you, Marco. Appreciate it. Go ahead, Alexi. Yeah, so this uh, layer two implementation is pretty chain agnostic. So as long as your smart contract language supports uh, a elliptic curve recovery, so basically verifying signatures against uh, specific messages, uh, should be fairly simple to implement this uh, payment channel contract. So as far as I'm aware, Sophia, can do all of these things. Um, uh, I mean, you basically deposit funds into a contract, uh, a specific payment channel, which is determined by the sender and the receiver. And then you can uh, settle funds out of that channel with some signatures. And those signatures are exchanged on the layer two through HDLCs. So, uh, It'd be fairly simple to uh, take out Ethereum and put in uh, Eternity adapter, as far as I'm aware. Cool. Um, um, thank you for this. Um, Philip, do you have any opinion on this? Um, like, um, especially, I'm curious about um, our state channels or payment channels, you could also say. Um, I mean, they're state channels, but um, we don't really need do a state of, channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you do a lot of swaps um, using state channels, certainly will work. I mean, the crypto is the same and should be all available what's needed for this. So you can make a drop in replacement, but currently um, Eternity on chain transactions are cheap and quite fast. So I think you should, uh, if you try to um, implement eternity first go for on chain and then this can be moved off chain quite simply uh, ideally we are future proof but in case we can get sooner to the launch with on chain um i would also support this but um yeah, yeah. if we Could have we hyper chains have... then the scaling is not a big problem anymore yeah on chain would really? definitely be a faster implementation because that's an even simpler uh, smart contract yeah but and at the, the same at the same time, it would be great to have another use case for our state channels since we have them out there for quite some time, um, but people just haven't used them very much because there's 
not enough need, I guess. Um, transaction, transactions are just too cheap still. And um, yeah, mm, but- Once the exchange volume yeah. picks up, I think then then you'll get to see the benefits of layer to more and more state channels, yeah. Yeah, uh, as far as uh, payment channels go, uh, it's important that they have a hash lock. So uh, the receiver gets the payment, but it's still locked until the secret is revealed on the network. Uh, that's a crucial part of the atomic swap. Uh, there's a lot of payment channels that are able to send funds, but they don't have the hash lock element. Uh, yeah, I guess it will work. It's also true that, so basically the way we've evolved this, uh, at least on the Ethereum side, we've been able to uh, do the swap uh, from a Bitcoin L2 to both an Ethereum L1 as well as the L2. So we even have the option of supporting whichever one is better, faster, or more efficient. So we, we, it doesn't necessarily have to be an L2 to L2 rotation. We could do an L2 to L1 as well uh, because we've already done that for, for Ethereum in the past. Yeah, I, I think this makes a lot of sense that the user can choose this um, kind of like even doing swaps between Lightning and on-chain Bitcoin or this would yep. be also something interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, JC will uh, hopefully in the next several weeks demo the submarine swaps. Yeah, I'm working on submarine swaps, so. That's the term for uh, on-chain to uh, Lightning swaps? On-chain to Lightning. Uh, on the big, yeah, exactly. And cool. you can do normal and reverse. Mm. Awesome, makes sense, yeah. Awesome. Great guys, if there aren't any more questions, I would like to congratulate the team and uh, thanks everybody, you awesome. know, Yanni. Cool, and uh, Piotr, uh, uh, any questions from the business perspective maybe? Yes, I just wanted to say, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed because it is exactly as you stated at the very beginning, it looks very simple, but it's actually quite complicated in the back end, at least from my perspective as a, less technical person uh, but i wanted to just add that the easiest things are usually the most difficult in reality so i think you did a from what i can see at least a wonderful job in making this very simple for a user in the end awesome thanks everybody and this is this is really big i mean we are super excited we made this promise that we'll make sure that centralized exchanges will become a thing of the past uh, our goal is to we don't hate the centralized exchanges. It's just that it's a systemic threat to everybody mm -hmm. to have these huge piles of risk and leverage hidden from everybody's view and until something breaks and people lose billions of dollars. You know. And then government steps in, right? For yeah, and then government steps in and, and they use the excuse to shut down the entire you know uh, ethos behind decentralization and crypto. So I think once the users see that well, you could use Coinbase or you could use this and there's absolute parity in terms of feature set, but the additional huge security gap and the risk doesn't exist. We think it becomes more and more obvious. So we're very, very excited. Uh, it's great to build in the bear market, but uh, we'll be ready when uh, things change. Great, uh, looking forward to the launch and yeah, uh, this is going to something big. I also feel it and yeah, great work again. And uh, just one invite, uh, special invite. Uh, in case somebody is in Stockholm next week, we're going to have a very special meetup uh, with uh, very special people. Um, also, the founder of Erlang um, or co creator of Erlang, Robert Werding himself, um, he will do oh. an AMA or meetup. And also, some people from Ericsson and the Swedish or Stockholm startup scene. Um, I know you're far away, but maybe, maybe you have some coll uh, collaborator or somebody who um, would like to. Um, yeah, hang out with us and um, learn um, cool things. Time. Cool. Thanks for the invite, Yanni, and thanks everybody. Thanks for your time, and uh, we look we look forward to seeing you at another demo very soon. And we'll obviously collaborate with uh, you, Philip, and uh, Piotr.